Um, as Papua New Guinea's national airline, Air New Guinea is deeply committed uh, not only to energy efficiency, um, but also to the broader principles of environmental protection and sustainability, which may surprise some of you who come into contact with Air New Guinea probably for one thing, and that is to get from A to B, whether that's uh, earlier on this week from Brisbane or Sydney or even Singapore to Port Moresby, and then maybe later on um, uh, this weekend on to, um, to back home. Um, but we recognize that uh, aviation is essential uh, for connecting economies and communities, and we are equally aware of our responsibility to minimize our environmental impact. So today I'm excited to share how Air New Guinea is defining and implementing an efficiency roadmap uh, in energy use in contributing uh, to environmental conservation and building a more sustainable future for our industry and our nation. And we're going to do that through our fleet modernization program, which some of you have heard me talk very enthusiastically about before. Um, at the core of our energy efficiency strategy is a comprehensive fleet modernization program, and that encompasses replacing 65% uh, of our fleet. Um, no small task. We, we operate 24 aircraft uh, in our network, and um, so inviting, uh, bringing in 13 aircraft, two wide-body uh, aircraft, 787-8s uh, um, and uh, 11 uh, Airbus A220s. Uh, these are advanced, they're high technology, uh, they're built from um, modern um, uh, materials that are ultimately designed to improve operating efficiency, um, uh, reduce fuel consumption, and significantly lower emissions. And to give you some quantum of that, the Airbus A220, uh, which will replace our Fokker jets, which uh, if you've moved, moved around the country domestically, you will have experienced, um, are designed to deliver somewhere in the region of 20 to 25 percent in fuel savings compared to the Fokker. So to fly, uh, we, we operate around about, um, let's say, 23 aircraft burning uh, circa 250,000 litres of jet fuel a day. Um, so a 20 to 25 percent impact uh, on, on, on that is, uh, is a substantial uh, achievement. Um, the Airbus A220 aircraft operate with a, with a next generation Pratt & Whitney GTF, uh, geared turbofan uh, engine. And this is a clean sheet engine uh, developed by Raytheon and Pratt & Whitney uh, a few years ago, designed to improve fuel efficiency, uh, operating reliability, and noise abatement. Um, the lightweight composite materials that comprise the aircraft, the, aer uh, the aerodynamic design, the further enhanced performance, and it makes it ideal uh, as a platform for, uh, for Papua New Guinea, given our diverse terrains and short runways and, um, and, uh, and often dynamic weather conditions. This capability will not only allow us to operate more efficiently, but also provide the flexibility needed to connect our remote regions uh, and optimize route planning. So by transitioning to the A220, we expect to see a substantial improvement in Air New Guinea's operating efficiency. The A220's lower maintenance requirements as well, minimize aircraft downtime, increase fleet availability and reliability, which will be welcomed by many, no doubt, uh, and extending our route range enables us to diversify our network even further. So it will be possible for us to increase frequency uh, to centers like Brisbane, Sydney, Singapore, Manila, uh, and Hong Kong uh, using a narrow-body uh, aircraft to complement uh, the larger wide body. The uh, wide body aircraft that we're uh, bringing onto our fleet in uh, 2027 uh, is the Boeing 787 aircraft. Now that replaces our existing Boeing 767s. Uh, the 767 was developed by Boeing in the early 80s. It was the first wide body aircraft uh, developed with fuel efficiency in mind. And if uh, some of you like myself can remember those days, um, we hurtled around the skies in four-engined uh, aircraft, the 747s, the DC-8s, and so on. Um, so to get on board uh, a transatlantic uh, aircraft designed to fly across the Atlantic with two engines um, was an interesting proposition for many travelers. 
But nevertheless, uh, twin-engine uh, trans-Pacific, trans-Atlantic uh, aircraft now are, are the norm. And so we are certainly excited when our 787s join us, which we'll be building on uh, that fuel efficiency platform that Boeing had introduced. Our fleet replacement program represents an investment that exceeds 650 million US dollars. It sees more than half of our fleet replaced, as I mentioned earlier, and it provides our customer with um, greater travel experience, a more reliable schedule, as well as improved efficiency. That improved efficiency will thankfully lead to more competitive airfares. I think that's something that um, not only our grassroots passengers, but also our corporate um, uh, passengers will be looking forward to. Because at Air New Guinea, we are not, um, we're not ignorant to the fact that travel around Papua New Guinea and around the region is expensive. It's expensive for a number of reasons, um, but certainly uh, uh, operating efficiency will help to improve upon that. And incidentally, the first A220s will arrive uh, uh, on our shores in September 2025, so less than 12 months away now. I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank our government, the Marape Rosso government, for uh, being instrumental in its support of, of this investment program. $650 million, or two and a half billion kina, give or take, um, is, a, is the largest um, uh, capital investment program that Air New Guinea has undertaken, and I think uh, we probably give PNG Power a run for its money when it comes to building dams and other large power infrastructure. It's, um, it's certainly not lost on Air Guinea that having a more reliable uh, fleet will de-risk several conditions when it comes to major project investment uh, across the extractive industry. Now, beyond fleet renewal, Air Guinea has implemented a range of operational uh, efficiency programs that are ultimately designed to optimize our fuel use. Uh, that includes advanced uh, fuel management systems. So we've integrated a fuel management system with real-time data analytics, analytics to monitor and optimize our fuel consumption in terms of aircraft performance, flight paths, uh, altitude, speed, and where possible, um, uh, weather conditions. So pilots can ultimately make informed decisions and minimize um, fuel use whilst continuing to maintain safety and time performance. Um, we do operate, where possible, single-engine taxiing, and we optimize use of uh, APUs or auxiliary power units uh, whilst on the ground, um, plugging into mains power wherever possible. We also have uh, weight reduction initiatives in place, so our newer aircraft have, uh, as well as being made of composite materials, also have um, uh, lightweight uh, in-cabin materials as well. Um, we we've certainly will introduce an optimized uh, cabin uh, sorry, a bespoke optimized cabin um, for passengers, but we'll be looking to introduce um, new and advanced materials in order to ensure that uh, aircraft total uh, maximum takeoff weights are, are limited. We're exploring the use of um, electric ground support equipment uh, at Jackson's Airport and also at Ley. Um, some of you may not know this, but in 2018, in the lead up to the APEC conference, Ernie Guinea did introduce uh, a number of electric powered ground support uh, units um, here in Jackson's airport. Unfortunately, we right now lack the ground uh, support experience and, and uh, expertise to maintain and, and apply uh, uh, to keep these uh, uh, equipment fully operational. But it, it goes to prove that in order for these uh, initiatives to work, Ernie Guinea must ensure that they are both sustainable, uh, appropriate, and we have the, and we have the right uh, ancillary and support functions in place. Ernie Guinea is actively working towards integrating renewable energy solutions at our operating facilities, uh, exploring options to install solar panels and batteries at our maintenance hangars um, and administrative buildings, providing cleaner energy and reducing our reliance on the national power grid. Uh, we're building a, uh, a hangar and a shed facility for our new aircraft uh, in the coming months, and we'll be incorporating um, uh, alternate um, uh, power sources where possible. Obviously, we are bound by the rules and regulations of, uh, the, of CASA PNG, so we have to be mindful of what we can apply um, airside and landside. 
the shift not only cuts our emissions, but also sets an example for sustainable infrastructure development in Papua New Guinea amongst our uh, fellow state-owned enterprises. Whilst improving uh, energy efficiency is central uh, to our strategy, uh, New Guinea is also deeply committed to a broader environmental protection effort, and one of our key initiatives focuses on mangrove conservation, uh, recognizing the crucial roles that ecosystems play in coastal protection, biodiversity, and carpet, carbon sequestration. Mangroves are not only vital to maintaining the health of Papua New Guinea's coastal environments, but they're also amongst the most natural and most effective carbon, sink, uh, carbon sinks. Uh, as part of our corporate social responsibility program, um, New Guinea is proud to have partnered um, with the local communities and environmental organizations supporting mangrove uh, restoration in and around the Bootless Bay area and, um, and also um, in the, uh, the lay vicinity. As we, look at, as we welcome uh, new technology aircraft, we also have the opportunity to look at uh, sustainable aviation fuel, or SAF, um, at reducing um, emissions. But we must recognize there are significant challenges associated with SAF. Uh, there's limited availability in the region and around the area, particularly in Papua New Guinea, and, and it's combined with um, high costs, often two to five times the price of conventional jet fuel, large-scale integration becomes difficult. Uh, additionally, the infrastructure and regulatory requirements needed for SAF remain underdeveloped. Uh, despite these challenges, Air New Guinea is actively working with our international partners, including Qantas and fuel suppliers um, and aircraft manufacturers in Airbus and Boeing to see how we can adopt appropriate um, and sustainable uh, SAF solutions. We're also engaging in regional collaborations uh, to develop uh, the necessary infrastructure and the supply chains to make SAF uh, more viable. And as some of you have read, Garuda have adopted a, um, a SAF variant based on uh, oil palm in the area, and so there's an opportunity for any guinea perhaps once our, our engine and our, our technology, uh, aircraft technology improve. Whilst our energy efficiency um, efforts extend to new technology and sustainable fuel options, maintain a maintaining a consistent supply of traditional jet fuel across Papua mm -hmm. New Guinea remains a significant challenge. The country's geography and the infrastructure constraints, uh, together with the uh, historical commercial um, uh, implications, um, in, in short, make uninterrupted fuel availability, um, a difficult obstacle to, um, to navigate. Air New Guinea is actively working with suppliers and stakeholders to develop more resilient fuel supply chains. I suffice to say that um, 2024 has been a challenging year uh, for Air New Guinea to maintain its traditional jet fuel supplies, uh, as many of you will have no doubt experienced. And we're continuing to work um, with all of our um, uh, stakeholders to be able to provide a reliable and sustained uh, fuel supply, not only in Port Moresby, where we've managed to reach some stability, but also around the region. And it's important uh, to, in to ensure that regional fuel supply in places like Madang, uh, Manhagen, um, KVN, Hoskins, and so on, are maintained because they ultimately allow us to increase the payload of our operating aircraft. Our fleet modernization and operational efficiency initiatives are not only about reducing cost, but they represent a long-term investment in Papua New Guinea's future. By prioritizing sustainability, Air New Guinea is positioning itself as a responsible corporate citizen. We contribute to global climate action and supporting the COP initiatives that PNG has signed up to, whilst ensuring that our country remains connected and economically viable. We are investing in our people and as we innovate and modernize, we are training our pilots, our engineers, and our ground staff uh, to, uh, to accept our late, latest technology aircraft. Uh, a lot of, uh, quite a few of, are currently over in, um, in Canada and France uh, undergoing um, uh, our um, entry into service programs for our new aircraft. But by building a knowledgeable and skilled team, we'll ensure that our entire organization aligns with our vision for a sustainable future, both in aviation and environmental stewardship. So in closing, Air New Guinea is not an 
just an airline. Uh, we're a catalyst for change and innovation in the energy and environmental sectors. Our fleet modernization program uh, stands to that. A sizable investment program, as I, as I pointed out, but it ultimately drives operational efficiency and a commitment to initiatives that demonstrate our dedication to setting a new benchmark for sustainable aviation in the region. We are committed to reducing our environmental footprint and leading the way in energy efficiency, and with the support of our partners and stakeholders, we'll continue to build a more sustainable future for aviation in Papua New Guinea, something that is so critical to connectivity in this country. I thank you for your time. I thank you once again to Kumul Petroleum Holdings for the support of this fantastic event. I look forward to our continued collaboration in advancing energy efficiency, sustainability for our industry and the nation. Thank you for your time. Thank you.